Hello, I'm Luca Kumai, and I'm pleased today to talk to you about inbreeding. Now, what should we care about inbreeding, and what is it? Inbreeding is what happens when you take a hybrid organism, which is defined by having many heterozygous loci, and you subject it to either selfing or crossing to something which is similar, and we get another type of organism after a number of generations, which is called an inbred. The inbred is defined by being homozygous at many loci. Let's define what is involved in inbreeding. Mendel understood that by selfing P, he carried out inbreeding. Now, you could also do it by mating siblings, or you could do it by mating cousins or individuals that are related in some way. Of course, in plants that are hermaphrodite, that is, that have both the female organ, indicated here by carpal, and, and the stigma, and they have anthers. The process of selfing involves casting pollen onto the stigma and the fertilization of the pollen to reach to the egg and fertilizing it. You're aware, on, on the other hand, that if we're, if we're taking cats, it cannot self. It has to mate with an individual of a different sex. What is the mechanics of inbreeding? We're going to go through an example where we're taking 100 F1 plants and we're going to carry through selfing one generation after the other. So we start with the F1 generation and you know that at that time our under plants will be all big A little a, so we're going to have 100 big A little a. And the percent of homozygosity is going to be zero. If I now let these plants self and I go to the next generation and sample them, I know that approximately I will get how many big A little a plants? I get about 50. I'll get 25 of the big A little a and 25 of the little a little a. So this is the second generation, F2. And in fact, it's called also the first generation of selfing. We have selfed for one generation, right? Percent of homozygosity is going to be 50. Now let's do this experiment again. We're going to carry these 100 plants, allow them to self, then go to the next generation, which, which is the F3. And now in that F3, we're going to sample at random 100 plants, and we're going to look to see what we find. You know that, in fact, all these, um, all these plants here are going to generate homozygous, right? This would be 100% homozygous production. The plants here, instead, are going to behave like the F1 hybrid. They are heterozygous, and therefore will produce a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So my next generation is going to have 25 of these plants plus one quarter of this, so it'll be about 12. And over here, I will be left with about 25 of these plants. And over here, I go again and have 25 plants plus 12. What is the percent of homozygosity? It will be 75. I can go now to the next generation, and if I do that, generation number four, F4, I will get about my 37 plants here, plus, so these will all give me homozygote, so it'll be 37, plus a quarter of these plants here, the progeny that I've taken at random, will give me about eight or seven, so I, let me put down seven here. And then we'll do the same over here, 37 plus 7. And I'll get about half of this guy, or 12, that are still heterozygous. So the percentage of homozygosity would be about 88%. I can take any following generation and advance in the level of homozygosity. Why is that? Because the guys here on the sides 
are going to keep producing homozygote, and the guys in the center will produce half homozygote and half heterozygote. So as we go through the number of generations, we'll reach a point where essentially there'll be no heterozygote left. I've added something to look at this, uh, this progression. We have now the numbers of inbreeding generation. We're going to add them here. So if we go from the F1 to the F2, we have one inbreeding generation. When we go from the F2 to the F3, we'll have carried out two generations of inbreeding. And down here, we're going to have carried out three generations of inbreeding. I can calculate the fraction of homozygotes by uh, the following formula. It's equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power of n. And essentially, what this formula is telling you that every inbreeding generation that we, that we use, half of our, of our plants will be left as heterozygous. So if we started with, with 100, half of the next population that will result from the first inbreeding generation will be heterozygous, and then half of that will be heterozygous again, and half of that, and so on and so forth. So what you see here is that as n grows, as the number of generation grows, this number will become smaller and smaller, and the fraction of homozygote uh, increases. So let's look at this from a different point of view now. Let's look at it from the point of view of a single individual. Let's assume that this particular individual has a very large number of genes which start off in the F1 all being heterozygous. So for example, this individual will have big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, big D, little d, etc., 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 hundreds, and in fact thousands or 10,000 genes, all in a heterozygous state. And let's ask ourselves the question. If we start with an F1, which is perfectly heterozygous, what are we going to get as we go for inbreeding generation, one after the others? We can look at all these genes. They're all going to be acting independently. We, we are excluding linkage for the purpose of this discussion. And so we know that in the first inbreeding generation, 50% of the genes will have become homozygous. Each gene is going to be considered in individually. So we know that for, for any gene, we'll have 50% probability that will be big A, little a, for example, if it is the A gene and then 25% that will be big A, big A, and 25% that will be, be little a, little a. So as I proceed, the fraction of homozygous genes increases. And in fact, it will follow exactly the same formula that we were using for the population. And what we're going to get is uh, the, the following formula, the fraction of homozygous genes will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power of n, n being this number here. This is n, the number of generations of inbreeding.